I am Daniel Hello, I'm Alessandro Panatoni, and welcome to Food 101. Food, 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 people! Let's talk about food! Oh, Shafi, this is the third day of fall. Uh, ready? <laughs> ready. <laughs> I didn't feel at all, okay? Yes. <laughs> it's so fast, Safi, that we are now fall. Imagine it's raining, raining, raining. Yeah, I know. It's, my Toronto actually is pretty good. Uh, we can't complain. It was uh, still warm today in an afternoon. It was uh, maybe 22 degrees. Yes. But, but this morning, yeah, it was uh, a little bit chill. Yeah. Fall is coming anyway, so we're gonna get ready, get ready for uh, you know Thanksgiving and, and uh, you know nice uh, Halloween time. <laughs> yes, if you miss our uh, Thanksgiving episodes last year, please do listen because you will learn a lot. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> how to debone the turkey and stuff, how to roast the turkey, how to make this oh la la stuffing. Ah, uh, nice version of Chef Alessandro. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. We're in preparation for Thanksgiving, people. Yeah, yeah. Well, we Italian don't, don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but turkeys do. It's good, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Turkey is so delicious, people. And Chef, we were so grateful that we still number one in South Korea. Fantastic. Wow. Thank you so much, South Korea. And you as I all. Chef and I are now eating kimchi because we are number one <laughs> in South Korea. <laughs> you know, I love kimchi, okay? I really uh, love it. Love it. When I was in Japan, I was eating kimchi. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's something good for digestion, people. It yes. helps your gut inside your stomach so please do eat kimchi or this uh, pickles it's good for our guts in our stomach and we are so grateful because of course we are on the number 12 best food podcast on the planet fantastic given by feed spots and of course lisa knows thank you for our listen score of 41 and we are belong to 1.5 popular show globally imagine chappy we have a lot of milestones and thank you for our 118 countries listening to us yes well thank you very much and of course our 1 million downloads Yes, thank you. Thank you for supporting this podcast because Chef and I are so grateful and we assure you that our fourth season will be better, bigger, and bolder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, Chevy, how Sata Sata this week? Oh, it's busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's always busy. Work, work. It's always busy. So I yes. think that no, 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 really, really, uh, really appreciate. It. You know, we we had our cloud that always come over, come back, and come back, and come back. So we are so glad of for that. And uh, you know, we really appreciate. It. You know, we we doing very very well. Very well. Come on. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes, people, we are inviting you to visit Chef Alessandro, one of the best Italian restaurants in downtown Toronto. Yes, uh, 120 Avenue Road, come over and make sure you got a reservation. <laughs> yes, because it's busy, busy, and you're going to experience Italiano Vero. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Shafi, what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about osso buco la milanese, eh? osso buco, eh? Actually, osso buco, osso buco, classic osso buco, or practically is the veal shank braise. Mm. Buco. Delicious! Yeah, it's amazing. Then, uh, of course, you know, everybody knows osso buco la milanese because it's served with the milanese risotto, you know, the saffron risotto. But you can even serve 
with the polenta that we talked last week. Yes. You know? <laughs> polenta, yeah, I love it. Yes. And uh, of course, you have the classic garnish for the Osobu is the gremolata. You know, the gremolata, it's uh, uh, can miss on the on the Osobuco, a classic Osobuco. Eh? You know, yes. it's the the green sauce I mean, with the chopped parsley, lemon zest, and garlic. Yeah, but sometimes basically. you can find some variation, eh? you know, everybody make a little bit a twist on it, you know, like a different kind of citrus inside or uh, different herbs, like, you know, maybe put cilantro, mint, sage. But at the end, it's always, you know, a nice uh, gremolata, it's a nice green green sauce. Yes. So, Shafi, what's the meaning of osobuco? It means uh, uh, bones with a hole. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what that means. You bone. know, that's the, the the classic translation. Yeah, bone with a hole. Yes, bone with a hole because you're describing the Vilsham people. And I love that something bone with a hole inside of it. Oh, mamma mia, so delicious. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's a classic. It's good. It's like I say, it's a stew anyway, kind of, you know. And uh, everybody, everybody make it a different way, but you know, the basic it's always the same. So it's no, no doubt on that. Uh, the preparation it's uh, it's simple, you know. Uh, uh, first, okay, you got you need the, your veal shank, you know, and uh, no uh, expensive as uh, you know the veal shank is not that expensive. It's just very uh, re relatively uh, cheap. Uh, but very, very uh, flavorful. So you got lots of flavor as uh, because, you know, it's got the uh, marrow inside, you know, the, the, the bone marrow. Yes. Bone marrow, yes. So it gives you all the flavor of the meat. Uh, anyway, so you got to braise the also buco to make it nice and tender. That's the, the, the trick, how to, you know, to have a nice. So it's very slowly you have to cook this also buco. And uh, usually, uh, usually they, they 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 make with a nice classic, uh, you know, uh, 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 brumadi of vegetable. So you looking at um, celery, carrots, uh, onion, you know, and for sure, of course, you get a little bit dust with the flour, the 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 uh, the osobuco, then you pencil it for a bit, and then you cook very slowly. With a nice uh, uh, wine, and, uh, and you make you know uh, cook in the broth with this uh, you know celery, carrots, and onion very very slowly. You know some people put uh, uh, tomato, a little bit of tomato, a dash tomato on it. Some other don't, uh, but you know at the end the result it's always uh, good. Because you got your meat nice and uh, juicy and tender. That's uh, classic. <laughs> classic. Classic, yes, a classic and easy way to do a sub buco. Yeah, it's it's uh, so easy. That, you know, if you think about it, you know, that's the also buco. It's, uh, you know, if, but if you can't find the also buco, you can replace it with anything else. But and you can cook in the same way, of course. Like you can uh, use uh, pork or you can use uh, uh, whatever, whatever you like, you know, just slowly you cook. But, you know, when you got to make also buco, the flavor is completely, you know, unique, unique. OK, yes. yes. It's something else, people. It's something to die for. Yes. <laughs> the first time you're going to eat this also buco, taste the bone marrow because it's something else. <laughs> you know that. You know, but you know, like I say, you know, you, you can make a, a, like a, in bianco, like white without tomato, uh, or you can make with tomato. And uh, but the result, uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit different the flavor, but at the end, it's almost the same. It's good, amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said before, you can serve you can serve it with the rice and uh, you know the risotto la milanese. Mm. So uh, classic the risotto we spoke we talk about already about the risotto milanese. A uh, long time ago, and yes, uh, yes, I remember. And uh, yeah, just to repeat to let everybody know, you know, to make a risotto, I mean, you need saffron, you know, you need a nice white wine, a shallot, <laughs> and, shallot then, uh, 
nice, uh, nice vegetable stock, and you cook the risotto like a usual risotto. You know, you toast the rice with a you know, shallot, a little bit of butter, olive oil, and then put your rice, you toast it, and then you put your a dash of white wine, make it evaporate, and you add a little bit of time to your stock. And then after the, you know, after 15, 18 minutes, it should be ready. You just uh, finish to monte with uh, some nice Parmesan cheese and a little bit more butter monte. And uh, the result is fantastic. And if you put it beside the Osso Buco, oh my God, that's the match. <laughs> yes, perfectly match. Or the polenta, as the chef said. Yeah, the polenta we talked last week. You know, the polenta it's uh, it's amazing. You know, the, you know, uh, even the polenta it's uh, it's a good match because it's a stew, so it's good. Yes. So, Shafi, before we go, and we want to shout out to the people listening in Sweden. Wow. Uh, yes. Thank you, Sweden, for your listening to us in Holland. We got forty three percent audience share. Shafi is tag home at twenty eight percent. King County at 7%, Vastra Gotland at 4%, Vastra Gotland County at 2%, Orebro at 2%, Uppsala at 2%, Skein at 2%, Vastra Gotland at 2%, Stockholm County at 2%, Vastmanland County at 2%, and last but not the least, Oster Gotland at 2%. Wow. Sweden! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created to empower food, food, food. People like Asabuko. Yes. Uh, so, Shafi, for the beginners, what are your tips in cooking Asabuko? Well, uh, think uh, that you had to go to a butcher you uh, you had need to ask to cut it for you because it's uh, you know the, you need a salt to cut the bones so <laughs> it's, <laughs> not easy. it's not that easy you know yes. you get your tools are home but it's not succeed good anyway but uh yeah you go to your favorite butcher you're gonna ask them nice and fresh if they can cut it for you they're gonna uh, saw it for you and then you have this beautiful nice steak Nice and thick steak. You're looking at at least one inch, one inch and a half here more if you get it because it's uh, you know sometimes you're for a big bones so, and uh, you know and uh, so you need the meat, meat, lots of meat. And not the what I suggest is always you know uh, salt, pepper, you know dusted with the flour and the pans here very slowly and uh, help yourself with two spatula to flip it over because otherwise the, it's going to broken from the meat from the from the bones, especially after you braise in the oven with the with the sauce, uh, it's very fragile as a, as a meat. Yeah, fragile, but it's very tender, it's very soft, very good. And, and just you know, follow the step there, you know, and make sure you cook very slowly. Pencil both sides, the nice and gold color. Use your white wine to give a nice, you know, um, a touch of white wine and uh, let it evaporate. And then you start with your vegetable. Uh, you know, some people like carrots and celery and onions, some people don't. So it's up to you. Uh, I would suggest to try because it's always good. And uh, then after, you know, if uh, you can always change in the future when you want to try, you can put uh, something new on it. You know, who knows? Maybe you want to put some potato beside or you know, it's always good. Oh. Uh, Yes, and then uh, very slowly, you know, you just uh, cook uh, a braise in the oven for, you know, at least two hours and a half, three hours, at least, very slowly. And uh, that's it. After that, you just take it out, make sure you got a nice side dish like polenta or risotto, and there we go. You, you rock in that night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. So, Chef, approximately how many hours you put in the oven or? Oh, you know, yeah, at least, you, at least, okay, at, at least two to three hours you gotta go for. At least uh, that's minimum 350, almost 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, you're yeah. gonna need that time because it's uh, you know, you need to cook very, very, you know, slowly to make it nice and soft. Because remember, that's a, that's a, still a, a muscle, right? Okay, 
I know that it's like <laughs> still a muscle, so it's going to be tough if you don't cook it. Definitely. So, Jeffrey, where did in Italy originated Osobuco? Osobuco is originally from Lombardy, North Italy. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think it's most popular over there because it's, uh, because the, the, the weather is, uh, was cold, so you need something nice and warm to warm you up. And let's say you got the Osobuco. But, Jeffy, different places in Italy, they have different version of Osobuco? Uh, no, there's not the, the different uh Different way how to, to make also They got uh, they they change a little bit the recipe. So some people, uh, uh, like I say, they like uh, uh, there is some fl- some with the flavor of cinnamon, bay, bay leaf. Uh, uh, some people use the cremolata, like I said at the beginning. Uh, but some other maybe they, they like with the with the vegetable, like uh, you know uh, tomato, carrots, celery, onion, and uh, you still. If you want, you can use the gremolata, gremolata, but it's up to you after. And uh, so that's uh, the, the two way that I know most of the time. But of course, if you if you don't like uh, uh, something on the recipe, you can always uh, change it. I always tell everybody to try first the first time, you know, how the recipe is supposed to be. And then after that, you can always, you know, arrange as your taste, of course. Definitely, people. But, Sheffy, before we go, and I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Book 101 Review, well, on any platform. Uh, Book 101 Review is to empower writers all over the world. Also, please do uh, grab a copy of our uh, Food 101, Volume 1, Basics Until 7. It's available on Amazon and reading online. Bookstores worldwide. So, Shafi, because we are number one in South Korea, right? So, can we make a fusion of South Korea and Italian cuisine of also buko? Oh, I got no idea. That would be... <laughs> <laughs> like. I can tell you that well, also buko is Italia with all respect. Oh. <laughs> you know, the nice beautiful cuisine they have uh, in uh, in uh, korea uh but of course they got lots of stew over there in korea i know that the hot pot or you know the so the uh, they don't miss the good stuff but uh, also google it's uh italian 100 percent that change this one you can make a spice if you want it eh? yes Spicy. yes yeah. and instead to use uh, you know uh, risotto you can use white rice you know, why not? Yeah, I love their uh, noodles, Safi. The black noodles. Oh, I yeah? Called it. I don't know what they called it, but... Mm, um, no, mamma mia! It's not <laughs> <laughs> yes. Instead of risotto, you can use the noodles. Right, Absolutely, Safi? yeah. Of course, yes. Once, uh, you know, it's a stew, so you can use whatever you like. Mm, something else. Or you can put kimchi on the side. Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, if you got nice noodles beside, yeah, why not? Yes. And again, thank you, Korea, for being the number one. We are so grateful. And of course, in Qatar, thank you. Shukran Jazilan. I think Qatar is still speaking Arabic. So Shukran Jazilan, Qatar, uh, for uh, listening to this podcast. So Shafi also Buko, invite them to, you know invent or uh, create something from also buko yeah what you want to invent oh, let's see uh, well think about the also buko is going to be like a main dish of course no uh, but uh, what we can do is uh, uh, make an also buko uh, we can chop it off also buco and put on top a nice crostini and we can have like a bruschetta almost kind of, you know? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's nice and juicy on top of a nice, uh, nice uh, uh, sourdough uh, uh, toast bread. Oh, fantastic. Mm, 
Sandwich. You're a sandwich, you're a sandwich too. <laughs> without the bones, yeah, without the bones. Yeah, without the bones. <laughs> without the bones. But yeah, yeah, eventually you, there is different kind of, uh, we can use it in different way, you know, and uh, yeah, for appetizer, I will think about it. I need time to think about it. <laughs> but, no, for, a, for a sandwich, yeah, nice, well, yeah, nice, uh, well, we're in Canada, and also a nice sub, you know, Yes. Instead of what, uh, you know, the, the classic meatball sub here in Canada, you can put a osso buco uh, meat uh, sub. That's good. Yeah, yes. It's something else. Yeah. People... On you. <laughs> <laughs> People, we are inviting you to do experiment in the kitchen. Chef and I are always encouraging you because who knows? You are one of the best in the making, just like Osso Buco. Until now, he's still echoing until our generations to generation to come. And let's do invent something like this dish, Osso Buco Milanese. Yes. Do you serve Osso Buco in uh, Sato Sato? Oh, yes, we do. See? Oh. Yes, okay. we do also buco once, twice a week, depends, uh, you know, on the uh, request of the guest. Yes, we do. We don't cook too many. We cook maybe uh, 15 in a night when uh, when we have it. But they go right away. They finish up. People know that they, you know, they like it. And, uh, you know, that's a classic recipe they use uh, as, uh, you know, the sotto sotto recipe. So... They follow the old fashioned uh, sotto sotto recipe, and uh, it's uh, people love it. Yeah. Yes. So, Shepi, can you describe to us where do you usually put the osso buco? Uh, in uh, what in kind the of plate? Like, yeah. What well, the plate, uh, usually, well, usually in sotto sotto, we serve the osso buco with the potato and rapini, you know. Oh, uh, wow. Most of the time. So, with always vegetable in the starch. So, well, vegetable and potatoes. And, uh, because, you know, to make uh, in a big, busy, busy restaurant a risotto milanese besides the, the osso buco is no, <laughs> we don't have too much time on it. Uh, but that's the way they always deserve. So, and the guests love it and they always request it. So, you know, that's, uh, we keep going in the same, in the same tradition, the same way. Yes, definitely. It's something else, right? So yes. people... We are encouraging you to try Osso Buku at home. But, you know, it's not that difficult as a, as a recipe. So it's uh, easy to, to be done. You just need a little bit of time for this one. Yes. Yes, a little bit of time and patience in cooking it. <laughs> well, you know, if you have a bottle of wine, and you can start to drink a bottle of wine with your friends, you know, and then waiting for the Osso Buku to be cooked. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> After you open up another bottle of wine for the dinner with us, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, people, thank you for listening for this podcast. And Chef and I are so grateful. I hope you will continue to support us because we are aiming for our two million downloads. Yes, <laughs> of course, of course, people. If we got our one million downloads, we are not. We are preparing for our 2 million downloads. And thank you for our 118 countries listening to us. Yes, thank you very much. And our fourth season is coming and I will, I, we will assure you that our fourth season will be, uh, well, more better than this one. We'll be bigger, better and bolder. Yes, and... I hope you're going to continue supporting us. So, Shafi, thank you for your time. Oh, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for tonight. It's uh, it's always uh, lovely to, to work with you anyway. So, yes. we, you know, we at least uh, we want, I want to thank everybody who listened to us. So they support us as much uh, as possible. Thank you very much. Yes, people, I just want to tell something about our Chef Alessandro and I. Chef Alessandro working in Toronto while I'm working in a British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> we are too far. Four hours uh, ahead or uh, uh, behind, right, Chefi? You are... Yes. Yes, you are. I'm yes. not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm four hours behind. So 
I'm so very, very, very grateful. Uh, Chef Alessandro have always time for me because it's too. I, I think it's nine thirty over there, right, Chef? No, they're better right? look now. <laughs> <laughs> For how many years now we're doing this? Have patient yeah, almost, two, no? almost, yeah, two, almost yeah. two years, and I think we are so dedicated to do this <laughs> podcast <laughs> that we are earning now our uh, fruits, right, Chevy? We are harvesting. Yes. We are harvesting our fruits because you know why, people? We are number twelve on the best food podcast. We have got our uh, one million downloads. We got our uh, 1.5 the popular show globally so we will continue doing this and as i said we are so grateful uh, even we are too far far away each other we have this dedication that we make this podcast better bigger and bolder, bolder of course and uh Every, uh, what they call this, every end of this um, episode that we are doing, we're going to give you trivia about us, okay? <laughs> that's, that's, that's one trivia. We are too far, far away from each other. And the first time we saw each other with our Riverside episode, right, Shafi? Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, we will continue doing the Riverside soon, but for now, we're going to stick on audio. Yes. Welcome, people. See you soon.